How's everybody doing tonight? Living the dream, brother. Living the dream. Now, before I engage in the presentation, those of you who have had the opportunity to do the pre-assessment, we appreciate you doing it. This is the State of the District Address. We have two outcomes tonight to increase stakeholder knowledge of understanding for the instructional vision of the Johnston County Public Schools. You know, we have one directive here, one initiative, and that's JOCO 2020. And when people talk about JOCO 2020, they like to put many different things under that umbrella. But simply put, JOCO 2020 is a vision for what quality classroom instruction teaching and learning should look like in the year 2020. Don't uh, fancy it up. Don't say it's something that it's not. It's a vision for what quality classroom instruction should look like in the year 2020. That exchange of knowledge from the teacher to the student. So that's JOCO 2020 in a nutshell. So we want to break down any barriers. We want to share information about the initiative tonight so that as we advance through the phases of the initiative, everybody's on board and has ownership of it. And then secondly, uh, our outcome is to collect feedback from stakeholders, uh, the pre-assessment as well as the post-assessment for successful spring kitchen table conversations uh, that are just around the corner. How will we do this? Uh, Real-time feedback. You know, the pre-assessment, uh, the post-assessment, as well as the presentation, and then uh, not so much here in the boardroom, but out at the eight sites tonight, uh, our principals, with the help of uh, board members and cabinet and senior leadership, will facilitate discussions about 645 about the things that we discuss in here, questions and answers, what can we do to take JOCO 2020 to the next level. So that's how we want to facilitate the discussion tonight. You know, how did this journey begin? It began with a kitchen table discussion back in the spring of 2016. In going to those eight sites and listening to students, teachers, parents, administrators, and community members, a vision began to perk, percolate. Um, I'm trying to think of the word I heard earlier today when somebody was describing something. You know, it took a life of its own. It became a natural movement. You know, as people go out and talk about personalized learning and personalization of learning, you know, that sounds fancy, but when you break it down and cook it down to an understandable level, you know, I think often in public education, the emphasis has been on the classroom teacher in the past. And so studies now show how the emphasis should be not necessarily on the teacher, but on the student. Now we know that any equation that comes up to success, we've got to have good teachers, good students, and that's where learning happens at its most crucial point. But with personalization, you know, as a classroom teacher 30 years ago, I'd prepare my lesson plans, I'd turn them in to Mr. B, he'd sign off on them, you know, Renfro, this is good. You need to work on your opening and your closure. And he'd give me feedback. And I would take that lesson and I would teach it to 30 students in mass. And there was very little change in that lesson from student to student, from class to class throughout the day. So we all know that we learn things differently. Uh, just based on who our personality is and what the genetic makeup of us as individuals are. So I'm not saying that we do a disservice when we teach that one lesson to 30 students, but what studies and research shows is that we should personalize that lesson. You know, 10, 12 years ago, we talked about differentiating the lesson so that it would meet different groups in the classroom. But if we truly personalize the lesson, we allow the student to master the material at their own rate and in the way that they prefer. And so that's what took place in the spring of 2016. The folks who participated in kitchen table discussions laid the foundation for our instructional 
vision, Joko 2020. It was not generated at a board retreat. It was not generated by a superintendent and cabinet. Uh, it came from stakeholders throughout the Johnston County Public Schools and said, if they can do this in other parts of the world, if they can do this in other states in the United States, why can't we do it in Johnston County? And so that was the charge that we, we were given. So that was the beginning of the journey. <clears throat> Moving on. As the journey was launched, things began to change in Johnston County over the last two years. You know, does anyone know what the fastest growing school district is in the state? It's not Johnston County, I promise you. Mr. Wooten, I know you know this out there, and I think uh, Vice Chair Johnson does. The home school district is the fastest growing school district in the state. More folks disillusioned with uh, public school, they don't like charter school, private school, and they elect the home school. Uh, you know, talking today, we have another charter school opening up in Johnston County next year. And people said, how does that make you feel? And I said, I relish it because I'm a competitor. Because when someone says we can do it better than you, then they cast a die. They challenge me. It says, you've got to up your game because you've got to get better. And that's what we continue to do each day in the Johnston County Public Schools. But Johnston County Public Schools should be the hub for learning in Johnston County whether you are one of the 36,000 students that goes or attends a Johnston County Public School, whether you are a charter school, a private school, or a home school student. It should be our responsibility to dot the I's and, and cross the T's so that if you're not affiliated with us, you get that quality education so that you can be a contributing member to the community from which you reside. So that if it's 18 and you enter the world of work, you can make a decent wage and be successful. If you graduate at 18 and want to go to college, you have the skills to do that. Uh, enter the military. Whatever it is, we should be an integral part in doing that. You know, we've done a lot of work reaching out to the Homeschool Association here in Johnston County. Uh, Ms. Peden Jones and team, uh, we did meetings a couple years ago. What can we do to help you be in a position to be successful? And I think initially, they were like, why are these people reaching out to us? What's, what's their angle? It's not an angle. It's about helping each student be placed in a position to be successful. Well, golly, Ross, you got 36,000 students of your own to worry about. Why do you worry about other students? Because as public educators, that's our job, to worry about everybody, to make sure they get the best that they possibly can get. So that is who we are, the Johnston County Public Schools. Um, JOCO 2020, our instructional uh, initiative, and our mission, vision, values, and goals all align with that. Uh, you can see this posted in every building in the Johnston County Public Schools, whether it's a school or central office, our vision, our mission, and what we value, and how it all goes back to relationships, relevance in what we learn, and doing it in innovative ways. You know, those three, things are, those three things are the core of JOCO 2020, all built upon relationships. You can see it here. We talk about a new mindset in the district. We have a story um, about fixed mindset, growth mindset, and innovative mindset. But because it probably goes beyond the boundaries of time I have, I can't tell you the uh, story about Ross wanting to play the piano when he was growing up. But it talks about folks having a fixed mindset and saying he didn't have the ability to, pay to play the piano. He could practice every day for two hours a day, and he's never going to learn how to play the piano. So here in Johnston County, you know, we understand that based on the person's personality, the individual's personality, that some people do embrace a fixed mindset and that they are resistant to change. But that is the antithesis of what JOCO 2020 is about. It's about being progressive. It's about growing. It's about being innovative. If you keep doing the things that you've always done, you'll keep getting the results that you've always received. You know, the definition of insanity is you keep doing the same things every day, but you think one day it's going to yield a different result. It doesn't happen. And so for, in order for us to be the best public education system in the state, we got to change what we do. 
we got to challenge ourselves to become comfortable with the uncomfortable. And that's hard to do because people by nature do not embrace change. But now at the crossroads of relationships, relevance, and innovation, that is where you find Joko 2020. You know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You know, it's about building relationships with each of the 36,000 students that we have here, regardless of what they look like or where they come from. JOCO 2020 uh, trots out three deliberate phases. And I think initially folks said, okay, three phases, a year for each phase, you know, it'll be here in three years' time. Last year, we uh, introduced phase one and focused uh, our attention on central staff as well as our principals to lay the foundation for JOCO 2020. A successful um, indoctrination, if you want to say. People took ownership of the initiative, excited about it, uh, embraced the culture of risk-taking and innovation. Phase two this year, we focus on our teachers. Now, the thing that we've seen through our early release professional development, you know, some schools, some teachers are more innovative than others and embrace change more readily than others. You know, phase two could take a couple years. For some people, it could take longer than two years. But what's important is those folks who don't feel comfortable in phase two, we support them through additional resources, additional training, additional professional development on early release days so that this growth mindset that we're asking everyone to demonstrate that they can become familiar with it and feel more comfortable with it. <clears throat> you know, there's some folks out there and there are not many in the Johnston County Public Schools, but um, think about a teacher who taught a, a lesson very well. You know, I still have students who come up to me and say, you know what, Coach Renfro, I remember that day that you taught us the great compromise in United States history. I can remember all the components of it. You know, I probably didn't change that lesson the 10 years that I taught it because I thought I had it perfected and it was so good. And what a disservice I did to those students because I didn't reflect and I didn't tweak and change that lesson from year to year and year to year to meet the needs of the students. And so that's a poor example of what I did as a teacher that we challenge our teachers today not to do anymore. And so after phase two, you know, some folks will be ready for phase three next year. It could be the year after next for some folks. But in that, we focus on our students, parents, and community so that they are more familiar with JOCO 2020 and a part about tonight. Relationships, relevance, and innovation, the core concepts of the initiative. I hope that's the question that we ask in the post-assessment because as many times as I've said it, I think they will get that one. You know, what is JOCO 2020 about? It's about relationships. The three most important words in public education, relationships, relationships, relationships. And then we can Google anything today and find the answer to it. And so students and parents say, we want to make sure what our students are learning is relevant and will help them later on in life. So you combine relationships with relevance in learning and then do it in innovative ways that captivates the student's imagination so that they are authentically engaged throughout the day. And that is the equation for success. The highlight, <clears throat> you know, uh, we all hear um, things that are out in the news media. I tell my mom every day, I don't know why you watch that stuff. You know, they've got 24-hour news, and 90% of it is about uh, bad stuff that happens in the world. Why don't you watch something that's, got, that's, that's telling good news and sharing uh, things that are positive in the world? Well, you can't find them. So part of the uh, purpose of the State of the District is to focus on the good things that are happening in Johnston County Public Schools. You get enough of the, the bad and the ugly from other sources. We want you to know about the good stuff. And so here are some uh, good examples of those quality things that we are living through each and every day. Uh, not, uh, how am I doing on time back there? Are we good? We need to hurry it up a little bit? Oh, I apologize. Um, things that we want to talk about on slide 10. Uh, Choice Academy Hubs 
at Clayton, Smithfield, Selma, and South Johnston. We have made great strides in reducing dropout rate over the last five to 10 years. And I applaud our student advocates, our graduation coaches, the folks uh, in family and community engagement for that. But now, choice hubs are a way for students who are forced to, to go to work during the day and stay enrolled in the Johnston County Public Schools and get the classes they need in a non-traditional setting in the afternoon and evening so they can stay on course to graduate. Truly revolutionary here in Johnston County and glad that we have it and hope that we can get the sources and funding to add another site next year. Also, the Innovation Academy, we call this the lab school. Uh, this is where people will go to see JOCO 2020 alive and in action. You'll say, well, it should be in all 47 of your schools. Well, it should be, but we want the lab school, uh, the Innovation Academy, to be where principals and teachers can go to see JOCO 2020 live and in action and say, we want to do what they're doing there and take it back to their school and replicate it in Wilson's Mills or Glendale Kinley or wherever. And so if you've not had the opportunity to visit the Innovation Academy, I would suggest you go see Ms. Johnson and do so. Uh, and then lastly on this si slide, um, I want to touch base again, you know, the importance of having good sessions coming up later in the spring. Next, Johnston County Public Schools today and moving forward. Important to point out um, on this slide that, um, you know, we can't be content with where we are and that we want to continue to grow and be the best that we can be. You know, this is who we are today. Um, you know, you look at uh, the LGC money, the $30 million that we're spending on facility and capital needs so that the chasm between haves and have nots, you know, goes away. You know, I was a principal at North Johnson High School. It was built in the 1960s. Principal at Corinth Holders High School that opened up um, 2011. A difference in those two sites. And so regardless of where you go to school, students and teachers who work in our schools should have pride in their facilities. Our custodians do a great job maintaining the buildings that they, they are given to their care. But still, there's $70 million in facility needs that needs to be funded so that we can close that chasm completely and all our facilities be a source of pride when our students and teachers go to school each and every day. So we're committed to that. You know, also you'll see a, a bullet point up there, you know, a bond referendum coming up in uh, November of 2018. You know, it's incumbent upon our Board of Education to work with our county commissioners to continue to deal with growth in an effective way, as well as take care of those facilities that are older and need tender and care dollars and cents. And so all those are things that we deal with each and every day as we plan for you know, what the future says we are in the Johnston County Public Schools. You know, relationships, relevance, and innovation. Those are the things that we hang our hat on each and every day as we navigate uh, from the time a student gets up in the morning and gets on a bus that goes to their, their class, the cafeteria. Uh, they go throughout the day and learn how to read, write, take uh, SAT, ACT, and we deposit them home safely in the afternoon. So many interactions. Uh, it truly is a complicated equation but we want to place each student in a position to be successful. That's our, our prime objective each and every day. So now, uh, Jamie Lanier, who's going to come, is coming up. Jamie works with education innovation here in the Johnston County Public Schools. So Jamie, come on up, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Renfro. So as Dr. Renfro uh, reiterated that it is really about relationships. And my job, I'm able to go out and work with teachers and I'm lucky that 
Um, I still get to work with students because I do miss being in the classroom, but being able to work with the teachers is so important. And when he talked about the relationship piece, one thing that we often do is get just qualitative data, just things from the teachers when we go out to, to hear, you know, how are things going in the classroom? But we wanted to find out what's really going on in the schools right now. So as you're doing the post assess assessment, I want to go over um, just some of our JOCO 2020 survey results. And as you can see, we've had over 2,250 responses, which is incredible. Uh, I was, it, you know, it was like watching the news with the, the polling because I, I watched the, the survey results come in and I was, I was just like, oh gosh, look at that. That's really good feedback. Um, and I've, able, I've been able to go through and pull some of the numbers right now, but tomorrow, in fact, our innovation officer and our academic officer, along with the executive directors in the district, we're going to be looking at some of the open-ended responses we got as well. Uh, you can see that from this slide, over 89% of our, our folks that responded feel prepared or well prepared to build those relationships with students and their peers and also administration in the building and other people as, as uh, parents and any other stakeholders that they deal with. So we're proud of that 89% uh, responded prepared and well prepared. Uh, innovation, we talked about, you know, embracing uh, change with a growth mindset and we've worked really hard with our, our staff, um, but we know we've got a, a little ways to go, but uh, we're proud to say that over 70% feel prepared or well prepared to, to support those innovative practices in the classroom. Finally, the relevance piece. Um, over 79% uh, of our respondents feel prepared or well prepared to, to support relevant learning uh, because kids, you know, kids sometimes when they're, they're learning, they want to know, why am I learning this? So we are happy to report that uh, about 79% uh, feel prepared or uh, well prepared. Finally, I did pull a few of the uh, remarks from just our open-ended, and I'll give you the opportunity to, to glance at those and read those. I, I've pulled four statements. Um, the first statement just, you know, the best county in the state, and I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, I, I love Johnston County. I've been here for a long time working in the district, and it, it reminds me when I look at uh, moving down to that third statement, uh, you know, Dr. Renfro, he just, he said the word relationships a lot of times and this statement when I read it and it talks about moving forward as a family, I couldn't agree more. This district feels like a family to me and I've got relationships that I've built over the time that I've been here that I'll never forget. Um, and I couldn't agree more about it. we feel like a family in, in Johnston County. And the, the last uh, statement that I pulled, talking about uh, meeting the needs uh, and those major steps, if you look back at the short amount of time that we've been working with JOCO 2020, <laughs> it's a lot of change in a short amount of time, and it's the family that has done that. It's the teachers, it's the administrators, it's the parents, it's the students, it's all of us working together to make those major changes in that short amount of time and, and I'm proud of that. So I'm looking um, towards the back at our live data and again, it's like the poll coming in, so I'm, I'm getting the numbers from the back of the room. Uh, we posed two questions tonight, our pre-assessment, do you feel knowledgeable about JOCO 2020? And we had about 78% that, that responded yes. But um, Brittany, can I see those numbers again? So we polled, polled you uh, with our post-assessment and our 93% said, do you feel prepared 
or answered yes, do you feel prepared to engage in discussions about JOCO 2020? So hopefully the time that we've spent tonight uh, with you that has shared our information and hopefully um, has done a good job uh, with that. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Renfro uh, for some closing remarks. Thanks, sir. Great job. Thank you. <clears throat> Nathaniel, Jason, Caitlin, I know you're back there and no one can see you, but uh, I want to give you uh, accolades for your dedication and perseverance today. Uh, Brittany, Jamie, Tracy, uh, the same for you. We could not do this tonight without your efforts. And so uh, even though some people may say, well, we want to see video tonight, I promise you, you'll see video in the future. But uh, just being progressive enough to live stream our board meetings is something that we've only done this year. And so it's good that we've done that on a monthly basis because it gave us a good trial run to make sure that tonight works well. Again, this is not about uh, me or what shared in here tonight. To me, the important thing is what you get ready to embark upon at your school sites in terms of questions that your principals will give you the opportunity to have input on because that will mold and shape and that will dictate how the kitchen table discussions go this spring. And we need your input on uh, how to go about that. Uh, we're very collaborative, we're very transparent. No, we don't use smoke and mirrors to do the things that we need to do here each and every day. Uh, you know, we're about doing what's best for each student, uh, the 36,000 that we have, and making sure that they're placed in that position to be successful uh, when they come to school every day, and that they're loved, they're cared for, and that adults that uh, interact with them are caring and compassionate and competent people. You can't ask for anything more than that, just to make sure that your, your student is treated the same, they're cared for, and they're loved each and every day. So as we prepare to adjourn here, uh, I think you guys are going to go to about 8 o'clock tonight. I hope that I can leave here and go and visit at least one or two of the sites uh, just so I can be a part of what it is that you're discussing and what you see as the future for your public school system. Uh, I want to thank all the, of the years that are here tonight as well as our newly elected officials. Appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come and learn more about your public school system. Uh, it is greatly appreciated because it takes all of us working together. It takes all of us pooling together to make sure that our students are in that position to be successful. Uh, education today is so different than it was when I was a student. You know, it's not the same. You know, some people lament and say, well, why has it changed? Well, you know, our society has changed. The way we do things has changed. Um, you know, we are preparing students today in elementary and middle for high, and high school for jobs that don't even exist yet. That's how quick things are changing in the world we live in today. You know, I read an article yesterday that said, you know, we won't have a need for attorneys one day unless they're specialists because of all the different things you'll be able to do with apps and online for legal advice. You know, whether that's good, bad, or indifferent, who knows? You know, think about cars that will drive themselves one day. Think about if you don't have to have a vehicle because a car comes and picks you up and takes you where. Now, you may say, Ross, that's the Jetsons, and it's a cartoon, and it's not going to happen in the world we live in. It may not happen in my lifetime, but it's probably going to happen one day with Tesla and all the things and innovations that are coming. So for us to put those students in a position to be successful, it takes input from everybody. And I thank you for your input. Have great discussions tonight. You all are appreciated. Thank you and have a good evening.